it's Kaylee Bowen with Valley Market Real Estate. I'm here with Angela, owner of Alaska Chickapalooza. And because it's chick season, we're going to go into getting chicks. Right. From the time you pick them up in the mail, getting them set up in their brooder, and all that good stuff. So I'll pass it over to Angela. Hi everybody, Angela Chickapalooza. Whoop, whoop. <laughs> <laughs> the coolest place to be. Um, so chicks, how are we gonna get them? So there are s lovely ways to get chicks in Alaska. There are people who bring in like a bunch of them and sell them. Mm -hmm. There's people like me who've made a business out of it. Um, so what I do is I kind of take a lot of the sad part of it. So like you can do a pre-order with me and in my pre-order, I would make sure that there was twice the amount of birds. So if for any reason, some of them are lost in the mail, mm -hmm. you still get your pre-order and you don't have to deal with the sad babies in the yeah. box. Well, and then too, I mean, you've done hundreds of these packages of chicks in the mail at this point. You're pretty familiar with what to do. Um, you know, so you're picking them up, which is pretty much like as soon as they arrive at the post office, you're on your way to go get them and then you got to get them settled in. So you're kind of going through that whole process and making it pretty mellow for the person coming in and buying them. Right. Um, but unfortunately, sometimes even in that process, I get losses. So I'm a human like mm -hmm. you. And I try really hard for you guys not to see that part, but mm -hmm. sometimes it's uncontrollable. Yeah. Um, but with that being said, the happy part about chicks yay chicks <laughs> okay so whether you've gotten them from me whether you've gotten them from a local distributor or whether or not you've ordered them from the hatchery the things that you want to do are say for instance if you've gotten them from me it's better to like go home set up your brooder situation mm -hmm. um kaylee's taking some really good videos so you guys will see that later um of what you want so have your heat have your water have your food mm -hmm. all set up and have the light turned on ahead of time so it's already warm right. by the time the chicks you know right and so right. um and you want to do that a day before they get here like for me my setup is a little bit different because i've there are some lights that just don't get shut off and then there's some that need to be turned off and mine is like a little bit climate control so it's a little bit different mm -hmm. but for a home environment, you want to make sure that you've got your basic whatever you're going to brood them in. Mm -hmm. It can be anything from a kiddie pool to a tub to a tote. Um, I've, a fish tank. Right. Um, something made out of cardboard. Mm -hmm. um, boxes. Doggy play pen. Like the play pens they make for like rabbits and dogs. and oh, The kid yeah. play pen. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it doesn't matter what your container is. It needs to be a container that your chick mm -hmm. can't get out of. And they usually can't get out of, or at least like say, for example, you're using a tub. They can stay in there for a little while until they're big enough to actually be able to hop out. Right. Um, and it depends on a lot of things though. So I just had local, I just had a local breed that's roughly about a week old, maybe close to mm -hmm. two, pop out this morning. <laughs> so, um, and then we'll tell you how to prevent that also. Mm -hmm. So basically your heat source, it can be a clear bulb or a red bulb. It doesn't really make a difference. <laughs> um, the thing is for it's more of a preference for you mm -hmm. so like say for instance if it's somewhere where it's going to be close to you at night when you're sleeping a lot of people prefer the red one because it's just like an easier light to okay. sleep through versus that glaring white mm -hmm. Um, and make sure you have like a safety connection on it. Like it's not just being like hung up some, you know, like they have the clamp and the, just making sure it doesn't accidentally fall down too. It's just another thing with those. So anyway, there's the heat lamps and mm -hmm. there's the, so they also have what's called a brooding plate. Mm -hmm. And so that's like a non heat lamp thing. Um, there's several different versions out there. Um, and yes, you can get them from Amazon cheaper than you can get them from me. <laughs> but, 
But that's here, how it works. But here's the benefit of getting them for me. They're here now. Um, but with that being said, there's ones that have like the plates that go on top mm -hmm. so they can't perch on them. And then they have the ones where they can perch on them. And then um, they have a lot of different brands out there. Mm -hmm. um, but it is an alternative. Um, you can also use ceramic bulbs okay. instead of like a clear glass bulb. Um, just make sure that if you're using ceramic that you still want, uh, 250. <laughs> um, so anyway, make sure that it is a 250 watt ceramic. Um, and then the thing about it is you can't just put it in any kind of lamp. You have to have one that has a ceramic base in it. Okay. Um, anything other than ceramic with the 250 watts, it's going to melt. It's going to fall down. It's going to cause what everyone is always afraid of, some kind of harm to your birds. Yeah. Um, so then another thing, like for us, all of our lamps are clamped onto a piece of wood, but each one of them has a screw in them. So like when we had that big, huge earthquake, mm -hmm. everything shook, but nothing fell down. So um, that's what you're gonna wanna make sure that if you are clamping it to something. Mm -hmm. um, you make, have a secondary source of attachment. Right, because if it's not, something could happen. Mm -hmm. The rubber and whatever surface can give out and it could slide down. And so yeah. for us, like I said, it's clamped on the wood, but each one of those clamps has at least one screw on one side and it's pretty stable up there. Um, let's see what else. They also have, so I saw these on here when I was looking for the brooder plates, cause that just seems to be a little bit of a safer option for fire hazards and supposedly they use less electricity, but I was also seeing they have mats and they also have these like stand up boards now that, okay. so like, what do you think about those? So the mat is kind of okay, but you want to check and see what the temperature of the mat is going okay. to be or what temperature in your environment that that mat is going to provide. Because unfortunately with chicks, they need 90 degrees when they first come in. Mm -hmm. So it might be a nice place for them to like sit and chill and whatever. Might not be hot enough. But it might not be warm enough. And so that was another thing I saw on the brooder plate is make sure that the one that you're looking at, some of them are not hot enough to be the main source of heat. Like you have to check the brand and the style and everything. Right. I yeah. didn't even know. I would have just assumed, you know, it'd be the main source of heat, but apparently that's not the case. No. With um, all of them. Yeah. So with that being said, um, she was talking about the cozy cute panels. Mm -hmm. So yeah. there is one out there that actually has a thermostat on it. Okay. So it can like do like a hundred degrees or 120 degrees or whatever it is. But like the cozy tube is only meant to break the chill in the winter time. Okay. So you have to, once again, do a lot of research in between the two. Eventually I plan on carrying both of them, but okay. for the moment it's not, I, I just found them out this winter. Um, but yeah, so there's one that actually has a thermostat to where you can control how much heat it radiates off. Okay. And so that would be an option. But the ones that don't have you, where you don't control the thermostat, then those are the ones you have to be concerned about. Okay. And because a chicken's temperature, an internal temperature of a chicken is 103 degrees. Okay. So you're like, well, they're sitting under their mom, you know, blah, blah, blah. Well, their mom is pretty warm. Yeah. So it's not, so you've got to stay warm enough to be a mom. So whether that be a light, mm -hmm. a brooder plate, one of the warmers, one of the side heat radiants, mm -hmm. it has to be warm enough to be considered like a mom. Yeah, that makes sense. So we've covered the heat for when they first come in. And then one of the other important things is obviously food and water. 
Now, if you haven't checked out our other video, we just did one on bird health where Angela actually went over like different brand options on the different boosts and stuff that you can get for chicks. So uh, she can go over that. But if you haven't watched that video, you might want to check it out. Okay. So first thing you want to do is whatever it is that you were using, um, if it's a slippery surface, you're going to want to put down paper towels. Do not put down wood chips, wood shavings, wood anything, because you want the first food that goes in their mouth to actually be food. Okay. Um, because if it's not food, it could be anything from like, if they're eating wood shavings, it can cause the crop to get full. And so they think that they're full. But they're not actually getting nutrients. Right. Okay. So the first two days, paper towels, puppy pads, whatever it is that you want to use as cardboard. Okay. It can be anything that you put down, but they just need to be like, okay, this is poop. So if they poop, they know the different, ooh, and you'll watch them. It's really cute. They'll bite it and they're like, no, that was bad, <laughs> bad. <laughs> You're like, uh-huh, that's what you get for eating the poop. But you want them to be able to distinguish between food and poop. Okay. And they can't do that if there's a medium in there. Um, and like I said, it's normally just like the first two days. I mean, even if I have them on bedding here, you're because they're a little bit older, oh, mm -hmm. you're going to want to do that once again, start them off because you are now becoming their mom and you need to teach them what food and water is at your location. Okay. And so by doing that, you're going to like start off with a blank canvas like okay. cardboard paper towels and then they graduate right and okay. then once they figure out where the food is and the water is then you know two days probably like a day and a half because bigger poop smells worse <laughs> <laughs> so maybe like a day and a half just like but give them an opportunity mm -hmm. to know where their food source is and where their water mm -hmm. source is and not the bedding mm -hmm. and then we can talk about bedding. So after two days, you can put them on bedding. What kind of bedding are you gonna put them on? Um, shavings, wood pellets, um, things that are not chemically treated. Okay. Because um, I know some people use newspapers and papers and shred, like I know someone who does like a light shred, and so they use shred as their bedding. So whatever it is, it's just as long as it's not chemically treated. Okay. Um, and the inks on newspaper is actually made out of soy. So therefore it's a food product. Um, so with that being said, it can be any kind of bedding. Um, don't be, um, you don't want, what is it? Cedar? Cedar's oh really, yeah. Cedar's no, no go. Yeah. Cedar's really, really bad. And so is like pine in the beginning. I know a lot of people use pine, but to me, the lower 48 pine is like more odorous. And so that odorous can actually kind of trigger respiratory issues. Okay. And that's another reason why you avoid cedar also is because of the respiratory yeah, issues. Okay. Okay. Sorry for another interruption on this video. As you can see, we picked up a little helper. Yay. <laughs> so you never know what you're going to come and fine when you come into the store so um so she's a day old goslin she's a peril groom and she fits right here perfectly <laughs> <laughs> so i think we left off somewhere with the bedding and so i think we covered that right so basically don't put bedding down for two days mm -hmm. and then to choose your bedding whatever bedding it is just to make sure that it's like not something that's going to harm them and so that was like, no, on the ones that say pine and, and then the cedar. cedar. So stick with white shavings. Okay. Um, or local milled stuff because like our, our pine for some reason doesn't have like the over ever effervescent of pine. <laughs> um, so, cause I know a lot of people who will like buy it either from the store or they will buy it from like mills. Mm -hmm. um, so there's different options of where you can get your bedding. Um, straw. Mm -hmm. I do not like straw. <laughs> I'm not saying it's like a no-no. Um, I use straw, like now how it's like super muddy and stuff. 
I'll put straw down because straw and mud makes adobe or like yeah the stuff that you know they used to make the little houses out of so that's what I use straw um, but if you want to you can use hay hay is safe for them to eat and it won't you know yeah so but they're gonna be pooping and eating the same thing so you gotta kind of be careful because and that would be one of the things that would possibly cause coccidiosis um, straw has no absorbency to it mm -hmm. so it will like not absorb if you put pu uh, poultry or ducks waterfowl mm -hmm. on it they have a lot of water mess and so it won't absorb the water you'll have like these huge puddles that you've got to like mm -hmm. muck out every day okay makes sense um, so I think one of the next things is we have the food real quick. So obviously there's medicated, non-medicated, but now there's also the no corn, no soy, you know, so what, what are your quick feelings on the different food options? Whatever's comfortable for you. Um, if you're a no corn, no soy type person, then no corn, no soy chick starter. Mm -hmm. There's a Mosca melon feed and then there is the scratch and pack no corn, no soy. So those are options. Mm -hmm. And then... Of course, there's, you know, medicated versus non-medicated. Which we had kind of touched upon already in the the health right. videos. And so, if you really want medicated, just be careful. Don't put them on. If they've been vaccinated for coccidiosis, don't put them on medicated food. If they are on medicated food, then just mm -hmm. be careful. So, when, at what point do you switch from the chick feed? Like, when, when are the chicks done with chick feed? It depends on what you're on. If it's a no corn, no soy, there is no secondary food okay. before they go on layer, so they would just stay on chick starter the whole entire time. And then after that, they would go on to layer when they lay their okay. first eggs. If it's like the non kind, there's a pullet grower. Mm -hmm. um, not everybody carries a pullet grower, but it's just like a middle food. So it's chick starter till four to six weeks pull it grower until they lay the first egg and then layer food when they lay an egg. Okay. Um, what about for someone like me? I make my own feed with the whole grains. Like at what point, I guess, are the chicks big enough to start eating larger, you know, food size items? Um, I would say four to six weeks okay. because once again, no, even like the scratch and peck chick starter stuff is just like straight crumble until they get mm -hmm. to the layer of food so it just depends yeah and then you have to add the grit to make sure that they can digest it let me pause for a minute oh right. okay so now i think we're going to talk about the water i know i barely just said like we had just kind of covered some of this in our uh bird health video but i'd like for you to talk about it a little <clears throat> bit more now okay so when your birds come in you want to have probiotics and electrolytes inside of their water. Mm -hmm. And the reason you want it in their water is because they are stressed. They have come a long way to get to you. And even if you buy them from like say me or, I know my hand, I'm sorry. There we go. <laughs> doesn't like me waving my hand out here. <laughs> um, so even if you buy them from me, they still at some point in time had to travel to me. Yeah. And so even if it's just that distance, here, I'll use the other hand. Even if it's just that distance between your house and my house, that stress is birth. Mm -hmm. Any kind of change causes stress. Yeah. And as a baby, you want to, like, give them the electrolytes, give them the probiotics, so that way everything keeps mm -hmm. going happily. Yeah. And they're pretty fragile at this young age, too. Like, even if they don't maybe pass away in transit, you know, in that first little bit, you know, too much stress or too much of that. I mean, they, they're still pretty fragile. Yes, because in the first three days, they you can lose a bird. Mm -hmm. And the reason is, is because one, sometimes they don't learn to drink enough water for themselves or eat enough food for themselves. Mm -hmm. um, so basically you are their parent when they come in. So you've got to make sure your baby's eating. You've got to make sure your baby's drinking. you got to make sure you know, that the poop is okay. Um, pasty butts is a really yes. big thing. Um, and the reason is, is a lot of times that region back there is really, really fluffy. Um, and so it may not necessarily be, so pasty butt is like diarrhea. Okay. And so what it does is it like adheres to the little feathers. 
to the little feathers around the area. And so then it makes like this little plug, I guess is probably yeah. the easiest way to say. And if you don't remove that plug, that plug will actually block up your baby. Mm -hmm. And then if they can't go poop, then that poop like causes intestinal issues and that intestinal issues can cause you to lose the baby. Yeah, That stage didn't seem to last long from what I remember. It doesn't unless they're really, really fluffy. Mm -hmm. um, I've had some girls where it's been like two weeks mm -hmm. of fluffy buttness. Yeah. And then I'm like constantly taking care of them because they're too fluffy. Yeah. Um, so to get rid of pasty butt, there's several ways to do it. You can give them a Brazilian, just rip it off. <laughs> but you have to be careful when you do that because kind of did the warm paper towel method. There's that also, or give them a like a little bathy thing and then like blow dry them. Mm -hmm. um, so if you do the Brazilian, you have to be careful because their umbilical cord is like very close to where their vent okay. is when they're little. And so if you rip it, you don't want to like rip off the umbilical cord <laughs> and cause like internal damage. Okay. Um, so I guess. Brazilians are pros, like it is in the real life, you know? <laughs> um, if you use a warm paper towel, then you just kind of just rub it until it, like, eventually comes off. Mm -hmm. And then there's the washing it with actual water and then a blow dryer. And so if you use a blow dryer, you want to make sure that, oh, guess what? You get to be on TV, too. Okay, so when you're using a blow dryer, you want to make sure that your hands are close to the area that you're trying to blow dry. So that way you feel the heat also because you if it gets too hot you can actually like fry that area you really don't want to fry the bum bum area because mm -hmm. it's really important later yeah <laughs> um yeah so let's see oh and then just one thing that i was always told is to dip their beaks like when you get them into the water yes so, you know and i know that was a pretty important part right and so I guess that's kind of how you set up your like brooder area set up. So for me, like I said, I put, um, I was using paper towels, but now mm -hmm. I've gone into like the puppy pad thing. Mm -hmm. And so I sprinkle food on the bottom. Okay. Um, just because their natural instinct is to scratch in on the ground. Okay. And so they'll scratch and peck and then they're like, oh, that's food. And then they'll realize that that's food. And so you just got to gradually get that to their feeder so i their feeders out there sprinkle mm -hmm. some on the ground and then with the water you just dip their beaks yeah. in there and it was really easy i just did it as they i was taking them out of the box right and then put them in their brooder right and so that way i make sure to dip, dip everyone's mm -hmm. and so normally for me what i do is i dip them by the water and then i sit them by the water okay and so that way they're like oh because they're kind of like in shock they're like what did you just do yeah <laughs> oh wait that's water that was good water and then they'll drink more okay and so if you but if like they look like they're really cold when they come in they're not peeping a lot first thing you want to do is not necessarily get food and water into them okay it would be get them under a heat yeah. source okay perfect well i think that covers the majority of getting chicks and what to do with them um, if we missed anything, you guys have any questions, please let us know and we'll be happy to cover it. So until next time, we'll talk to you later. Say bye-bye.